that uh, sort of got cut off and customers coming in and whatnot, but uh, here we are. That was, of course, uh, we're listening to my bumper music today, Eminem, Won't Back Down, featuring uh, Pink. And uh, I like a lot of different music. I think that's sort of obvious by now. And uh, I, don't mind, uh, I don't mind a little Eminem every once in a while. If you want to call it music, I don't know, but a guy rapping really well over uh, sound. So, uh, what I wanted to talk about today, what I want to take on as an issue, is uh, social networking. But I did want to give a little bit of uh, an update as far as uh, as far as Uh, space and, and space adventure and travel go. Today I saw um, on the New York Times an article about uh, privatizing them. Everything I talked about uh, on the last day job, basically. Uh, privatizing space flight, how now that the re shuttle Atlantis has returned, uh, the President of the United States uh, has given a you know, basically, uh, the green light to privatizing uh, space flight, making it uh, the next thing for people to do, for businesses to do, and venture capitalists to do is fund space flight to the moon, get to the moon, go to the moon, and, you know, that's uh, what they're saying now is uh, the thing to do is to uh, get to the moon and go there now. And I submit that. Uh, I submit to you rather that we're already as a race on the moon and on Mars and now you know they're telling you about it you know just like the United States of America will say you know we don't have any troops in Libya or ground troops but you know as well as I do they have uh, you know spies undercover assets black water whatever and if they say they don't have something, usually, uh, or say they aren't somewhere, usually they are there. So, And like I said before, everybody accepts that we're sort of 30 years behind uh, technologically what is available in the secret R&D departments of places like Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, and uh, Northrop Grumman, etc., etc., and the Black Ops and secret space program, etc., etc., so I've updated my last blog, uh, Helium, sorry, uh, Helium 3 Mining the Moon, which I think was number 35, a job 35. It's on the website at adamjosh.com. You can find it there. But what I wanted to talk about today was social networking. Um, actually, before we get to that, as an aside, another aside, I wrote a song last night. I'm not saying it's a good or bad song. I think it's good enough to record. And... Uh, it's about space with the whole topic of uh, humans on other planets and in mind. I'm actually going to get to recording that um, once I'm done with this. And I'm assuming that'll take me another 10, 20 minutes and then go, uh, go grab uh, my guitar and start to record it and see how it comes out. I'm excited. You can find the song will be at, um, you know what I'll do, the power of later coming back to this is I'll put the link right here. The link to the song. Oh, this way. Link to the song. Later I'll put that in there. Yeah. So, uh, what I wanted to talk about though was social networking as I've said several times now. Um, and as people who are watching this know, these A-jobs, the Adam Joshua Old Rog, isn't uh, edited. It's a one continuous shot no editing and if I get interrupted then that's how it is 
but I don't expect any interruptions at this hour of day. It's pretty hot out. Let me just say that. Um, and with that all said and done, so Google Plus is launching, uh, Google is launching Google Plus, their new social networking platform. And uh, people, uh, those of you who know, I am not on Facebook and uh, I don't think anybody's on my MySpace anymore. Um, I guess YouTube, you can sort of consider a social networking site, but uh, if you're using it for the purposes that I am, I don't really know if that's social networking. I, I, do, I do know of and am well aware that people use it for social networking uh, to like have friends, find friends, talk to friends. Um, I think it's pretty obvious that I'm using YouTube to record as a, as a, as a means to distribute my recorded content. Um, not so much for social networking, although if you want to use the, the word social, not the term social networking is so loosely defined as to say that uh, an artist or somebody like me, maybe I'm not an artist, but whatever I am, putting up their music, I don't know, is that social networking? You know, when a painter paints his painting and hangs it on a wall, is that social networking? I'm not comparing myself to Picasso, but you know, when Picasso painted his wall, you know, his masterpieces and hung them up, he's thinking that's social networking. Putting putting your art or putting what you do in a in a public forum, I don't know if that's social networking so much as, you know, two halls down from Picasso is the bathroom stall where people are scribbling notes to each other on the wall. I think that would be a bit more social networking. Anyway, all that aside, uh, you can sort of probably tell my sort of general disdain for all things uh, social networking, but uh, uh, let me get into why. I think that it's sort of cute that if you're logging, logging or signing up for a Google Plus account, I think it's sort of cute that they play dumb with you and ask you for your personal information. Don't you find that sort of cute? When you're logging on to one of the biggest data mining servers, they know your ISP address, and they've already profiled you as a person by your I IP address, and they're asking you for your personal information like they don't already have it. I think that if you're going to get into Facebook uh, or Google+, Plus. if you are a sort of like a public figure or like a musician or an actor, political figure, I think that makes sense. And this is how they suck you in, is that if you want to, as say somebody who isn't one of those, uh, talk to people or leave messages on those walls, you have to sign up. So they sort of get you by putting the, the actors and the musicians on first. But, uh, I mean, I just read an article this morning that uh, there's a gentleman who is being, uh, you know, sports fans are being uh, arrested for their hate speech. Like, you know, just be talking about one team versus the other. And there's sort of endless, uh, endless uh, evidence of police, FBI, CIA using Facebook to track people and to... Uh, to, you know, bust, uh, what were they busting? I, I heard a story around here of busting a, a bush party because they advertised it on Facebook. And I suppose you could say, well, that was stupid. Why would you advertise it on Facebook? And Twitter, a little less invasive. Clearly they know your IP address, unless you're using a, a proxy server. You wonder how the how a group like Anonymous can have, uh, like the Anonymous Hacking Collective, how they can have a uh, Twitter account. Unless it's government run somewhere behind the scenes, then 
they probably are using a proxy server when they log into Twitter. Websites like StumbleUpon, I, uh, I've heard of StumbleUpon before, and I, don't, I honestly didn't know that much about it. So, yesterday, I typed in StumbleUpon, and sort of went through a trial, or um, a demo, and basically, as I understand it, it collects websites that the, the the website stumble upon has calculated would be of interest to you by your interests and by rated by things you collect and maybe what your friends think you would like so it's sort of a social networking platform again uh, so every morning you would have or every day you'd have like a list of websites or cool things on the internet to check out according to your your fancy tailored to your to your uh, tastes. Um, I guess, you know, if we lived in a rose-colored candy cane world, none of these things would be a problem. But at the end of the day, we don't live in that world, and Facebook is a website on the internet. It's not publicly owned. It's a for-profit corporation now. And I mean, when you're on Facebook, you say it's you know my Facebook or my stumble upon, but it's not. It's you're on somebody else's website. You've made a profile on somebody else's website, despite whatever privacy settings that you think you've clicked or un or not clicked. The 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 owner of that website knows your profile, obviously, because you're on their website. You know, if you go to my website, not mine because I don't play silly games like this with people, but if you go to my website, if you went to somebody's website and made a, like a login account so you could post on their website, general information is like they know your IP address, which means like where you are, where your internet provider is. Um, and if you give anything else, of course, they have all that information, whether you decide to keep it hidden or not. So, I am, I'm not, um, I'm not advocating that people don't use those sites, these sites. I'm just saying, think about it. Most people that I know, they're only on Facebook because their friends are on Facebook. <laughs> or people I know say, oh, I only use it to get in touch with my family or to keep in touch with my family. Um, I guess the problem is that Facebook stumble upon and MySpace maybe back in the day is sort of is sort of uh, providing a service that as humans we inherently gravitate towards social networking keeping in contact with family they're providing a service that sort of offers facilitates that inherent human desire and exploits it and maximizes on it and um, I don't know, if you're the person that, that wants a corporate entity with ties to government agencies like Google, knowing your circle of friends and your circle of coworkers, they encourage you to divvy it up between, you know, workers, family, friends. And no for me knowing that somebody knows a corporate entity like that who can be hacked, that information is now public, who your friends, who your family are. I'm uncomfortable with 
a corporation having that information, especially Google, the same corporation that turns a blind eye to working with China to restrict uh, information on the internet and works with a country that endorses one child policy and all the mobile mobile execution units and etc cetera, etc cetera. I mean this is the company that we're dealing with that we're talking about I personally have a long and sordid history with uh, Google Video and I'm well aware that that because of my general attitude and my denying and saying no to the AdWords account when it first AdWords account when and all that first got set up because of my hostility towards it and not wanting to play ball as a result I've you know, my number counters for views are always down, and and my videos don't play, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, that's fine. And at the end of the day, you have to be aware that you're using somebody else's website. But uh, when before Google bought YouTube, when they first started Google Video back when uh, Google was just a search engine and competing with Excite <laughs> back then and other search engines. Back then I have I had an email, a few emails from from the Google team noticing me because of my content on other websites because I've been in the habit of doing what I'm doing right now, recording things on video and posting them on whatever website that I wanted to. I have, um, I used to put my uh, videos on other websites as well. I have a few videos on uh, Ustream and still have videos on Acid Planet, still have videos on Google Video. And uh, I look at it as whatever facilitates my demands best. And if something comes along that facilitates my demands, which are pretty minimal, give me a video um, and let me have a link to it and make a good quality video, decent good quality video, not extremely pixelated. I know I'm not using the best camera right now, but uh, when I've used my high def cameras in the past for like music videos or other people's music videos, I like when it looks good. So anyway, they uh, approached me and um, and it was like sign up for the or they wanted me. It wasn't like a, a generic email. It was a it was a personal email from the people at the Google Video team who were first starting off. And I do know the difference. And I wouldn't have told this story if it was just a generic email. I'm talking years ago though, years ago. Uh, so. And it was like, well, to get into this program, you know, they're saying, oh, it could be potentially lucrative, and you could, you know, per click on your video, we will put an ad on it, and if somebody clicks on it, then you get a cent. So I, I, I sort of like felt it out and was like looking at stuff, and at the end of it, I just got a bad taste in my mouth, and I, I thought to myself, I don't want to look at. The, the things I do art-wise or uh, hobby-wise as as, uh, as money-makers for somebody else specifically and for myself I I don't know I, I've always a little been a little bit different like that when I was growing up my dad told me don't ever play music for free Adam and as I started learning more about the internet and the age sort of that we're living in now, I don't know if you can really carry that mentality of don't play any music for anybody for free into today's marketplace. Because whether you like it or not, your music is free if, it, if it's recorded. Whether you like it or not, music is free. We have put prices and uh, 
monetary attachment to it. And although I would gladly, and I have gladly, and will continue to gladly pay uh, money to see people in concert, I'm not entirely sold on the, on the, uh, you know, every time I listen to an artist's song online, I have to reimburse them or give them money. Uh, I'll pay to see them live, because I understand the cost behind uh, all that. But you know, well, I think maybe I think a little bit differently. I know there's a lot of people that think like me, so and there's a lot of people who don't. But on my website, if I record music, uh, then and if I'm happy with the song, or even if I'm not so happy with the song, I'll put it on my website for free. People can download the full MP3 and whatever and listen to it. And as far as money goes, I don't look at my uh, so far in my life my my uh, music career hasn't been one worth uh, uh, basing a lifestyle off of so I've always uh, not looked at it that way I've always worked for whatever money I had and uh, done other things for as far as paying bills and things go I wouldn't look at music as, uh, as a way to pay bills I have been in that position before where I've made money from my music and from playing music and I know how it starts to change your personality and your perception of music when you start tying monetary value to it and I'm not entirely opposed you know if somebody wants to in the past I, uh, I worked for a website once and uh, they uh, it was the summer of 2008. Uh, they contracted me to write songs for their website. And so it was pretty sweet because they were paying me in pounds, converted into our currency, uh, or euros rather, converted into our currency was double. And uh, the people at the website knew that, but that's how they wanted to pay me. So I wasn't opposed to it. And it was nice. Uh, but... Uh, it can get weird, I suppose. Trailing way off from my original point of social uh, networking. If you have a Facebook or Twitter account or a StumbleUpon account or a uh, YouTube account or any of those Google, you know, the new Google Plus or whatever, I'm not, I'm not trying to condemn you. I'm just saying if you feel like you have to be on these websites, limit all the information that you can. Don't, don't let everyone know everything about you. I would never take pictures of your front door or like where you live. I, I'd even go so far as to say like, you don't want to tell people who your friends are and who your family is because we don't live in a rose colored world. And I've had people, as I've said before, give me death threats. And for those of you out there who have had death threats given to you, you know how serious it is to post pictures online of your friends and family or your front door or where you live. You know how serious it can be. Not that it's always that way, but not everybody thinks the way that you do. Not everybody is innocent enough. And not only that, but then there's, you know, uh, emotionless sort of corporation ties to profiting from your the sale of your personal information stumble upon is basically making uh, light um, interest profiles uh, and a, a gold mine for third-party advertisers to sell that information to about what people like and what their interests are and you're being a passive part of that system and you're not getting any kickbacks for it so if they're making all this money off of you and I think everybody knows that Mark Zuckerberg or the CIA, whoever really made Facebook. All the millions or billions and trillions, however much money they've made at the course of their their career. The average Joe six pack with a Facebook profile and his family and friends, he hasn't seen any of that money. So they're purely profiting off of you in a pyramidal structure, top down, where people at the top are making money and selling your information. And yeah, you're getting a service but you're the one being exploited, not the other way around. You're not exploiting, you know, his servers by your information and, you know, your micro, your micro spec of family photos and 
friends and all that. You're actually providing them more than they're getting from you. More than you're getting from them, rather. As far as Twitter goes, I'm on Twitter and it's the, the least invasive social networking, if, if you want to call it that. I don't use it for social networking. I use uh, Twitter and I've told people flat out, don't add me as your friend, don't at me any messages. What I found uh, interesting was I could integrate it into the uh, HTML coding of my front page of my website so I could have a dashboard of sort of like streams of what I'm, what I'm up to if I wanted to tell people what I was up to at the moment. You know, when I eventually do get a new cell phone or when I eventually do update my technological uh, capabilities, uh, maybe in the future I could say, I could text from, you know, I text, I've texted from other people's cell phones, <laughs> but I could text, you know, and say, you know, this is what I'm up to or here's where I am. I think that's interesting. Um, I suppose there's other ways I could do that. I probably could have coded the, uh, the, an app or something like that myself. But uh, so all of our kids in the next generation who are growing up in this sort of social networking, social media uh, environment, not questioning, was it always like this? You know, you know, your your kids grow up playing on the computer. They don't realize that uh, back in the day, the parents had to go to the libraries. You know, back in the day, if we wanted to check the weather, we'd uh, open the blinds and look out the the door or the door, the window. We wouldn't uh, look up a, a weather station. Or if you wanted to see your your friends. Uh, then you would go see them physically in person. If you wanted to write on somebody's wall, then you would probably do that in a bathroom stall or with a can of spray paint. <laughs> so, I think statistically it's pretty obvious that social networking is doing a lot of harm to how we define keeping in touch with our friends and family. When's the last time you wrote a letter to your grandmother? You know, I physically wrote great letters to my grandmother. I'm not trying to toot my own horn. I'm just saying that that was the mode of communication that she had before she died uh, a few years ago with me. And so I would write her back. And so, like, my dad's on Facebook. My dad knows how to use a computer now. My mother doesn't. So when I go to visit my mother, I have to visit her in person. She barely has a, She doesn't even have a telephone, actually. So... Nowadays, everybody's sort of, you know, on on the internet or on uh, on on Facebook. And if you're not on the internet, if you're not on Facebook, you don't exist to a lot of people. So it's. But on the other hand, I can see sort of the benefits of some social networking when you're talking, keeping in touch with family members that are you otherwise wouldn't be able to keep in touch with in California uh, or other parts of the world. But then on the other hand. If you can't keep in touch with them, maybe there's a reason. Or if you, they haven't, they wouldn't keep in touch with you unless they were on Facebook. Maybe there's a reason for that. You know, if if you if it if it comes down to it that when you unplug your computer, you have no friends, or you have no real friends left around you, I think that's a pretty sad state. But on the other hand, <laughs> again, I've been to uh, one of my friends' places in southern Texas where I actually got this from. He carved me uh, this little limestone. Anyway, and he lived, uh, my buddy lives on a ranch, sort of isolated from everybody else. And I can honestly say that I probably wouldn't have met him in person if it wasn't for social networking. And therein lies the conundrum. And because of his remoteness from other people, he really can't keep in contact with other people uh, without uh, a computer. I suppose if we were back in the before computer ages we'd be talking I'm not I'm not and I'm not anti technology at all. I'm just saying to be wary of how much personal information you're giving out to corporate corporate entities or to, to a website owner that's not you don't know him, you know, you don't know the team at Facebook or Twitter. You know, and you're just sort of volunteering all this personal information about yourself to people that can stumble upon. And on the other hand, people will say if you don't have any secrets, then you don't have anything to hide. But that's really not the world that we live in. Uh, the world that we live in is sort of an imposing culture of control. 
regardless of whether you have something to hide or not. So, you know, I, I wonder if those morons that were in Vancouver uh, rioting and instigating these riots and lighting police cars on fire, I wonder if those guys thought that their pictures would be up on a Facebook profile, Facebook group the next morning saying, help us find these idiots. And I wonder if they, they knew that their own Facebook account would be their undoing to the point where they got arrested and charged with whatever they got charged with. I suppose that's internet justice, and I'm not knocking that at all. I, th I think all those morons should be held accountable for what they did, right? But it shows there again the sort of idiocy of these people who volunteer all this information about themselves and that's not even getting into the side of biometric technology, face scanning technology, and etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Only to have that information that they've divulged and given out about themselves incriminate them later. So I guess I would say be smarter about social networking and research the origins of any sort of uh, company you're on. I don't buy for one second that Mark Zuckerberg is the creator and founder and funder of Facebook. I don't buy that for one second. Prove it. You know? I don't buy that uh, Bill Gates invented uh, Microsoft Windows. I don't buy that either. You know, all these people need like uh, these, these corporate entities uh, need uh, a figurehead, sure. But uh, did President Barack Obama invent the United States? No, he's a figurehead, you know. Maybe that's a bad analogy, I don't know. But Social networking. I, w I am not going to get a Google Plus account, and I am uh, a musician, and I do put my, my name out there, and I do have a website, and... I am the type of person where you'd think, well, you should have a Facebook account, you should have a MySpace account, you should have a Google Plus account and all that because you're a musician, you want to get your music out there, out there. But for me, getting stuff out there, at what cost, you know? At what cost do you want to get things out there? I mean, do I, I don't want to get them bad out there <laughs> bad enough uh, to go and give out my personal information and stuff on Google Plus, you know? Then again, I don't know. Ten years down the road from now, if things change, maybe I will. Like it's, it's just I'm so weary of it, and uh, not from an unhealthy point of view. Like I'm paranoid. I don't have any tinfoil hats here. I'm just sort of like a realist. You look at the news and you can see how social networking is sort of being used, also to incriminate people. And so you know, if the police are scanning it for criminals, they're also looking at your profile. And so that you know. So so much double think. Like so, what are you doing something wrong? Well, it's no, it's not that you're doing something wrong. It's that do you want to, do you want to know that everything that you do is being monitored by police, FBI, or what can I say, or whatever. And then there was a while ago where you know uh, there was a drug ring or whatever that got caught. And sort of they all they all had Facebook. They're all Facebook friends with each other. So like, you know, one guy is so retarded, he's writing, my lines are the straightest, he's got pictures of himself with guns on his Facebook profile, and I mean, you're looking at that, you're like, wow, moron, you're asking for that, right? You're asking for that. But then, he's got family, right? Maybe you were his cousin. Uh, maybe you and him talked all the time, maybe you didn't know he sold drugs. And I'm not talking, this, is, this, this didn't happen to me, so don't think that I'm like telling a story to you in 27th person, I'm not. But, it got me thinking because I did know some of those guys and friends of the friends who were friends with them and I didn't know some of these people and it got me thinking you know I was you know you could sort of unknowingly be a cog in a, in a wheel to get one of your friends or family arrested if they're doing something wrong maybe you maybe you don't agree with whatever lifestyle they have but you certainly wouldn't want your friends or family arrested I suppose right and the problem is that like say okay well What's wrong with that? It's illegal. Well, everybody knows that our that the that uh, that our government is is pretty corrupt and out of control. So you're sort of giving all that 
power not only to a private corporation, Facebook, but they in turn are allowing our corrupt, out of control government to hack and access all your information. Do you see the problem here? Mark Zuckerberg can say, you know, whatever about his privacy settings, but then you see the proof in the pudding that he's handing over your personal information to local police, FBI, blah, 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 blah. Obviously, because you can see the results. People are getting arrested. People are, are in court cases over things on Facebook. And not only that, but now there's going to be a whole new move towards uh, hate speech. Free, you can have freedom of speech, but free speech, hate speech isn't freedom of speech. So now, you know, ban Ki, Ki Moon from the United Nations and all that. They're all sort of moving towards using hate speech as an excuse to regulate the internet. So hate speech isn't freedom of speech, therefore, for all this hate speech that goes on in the internet and the people, kids killing themselves over, you know, being bullied on Facebook, which is pretty horrible. I've seen some really horrible uh, videos of people getting bullied on Facebook. People will use that as an example. See, 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 we have to regulate the internet. We have to have the government tell us what the truth is and have government sponsored websites and and you know this website will be shut down if it doesn't meet the specific standards and it'll be run by a private uh, corporate corporate entity by a public blah 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 and this uh, regulation internet uh, it, regulators of the internet will be totally benign and to, you know it's bull everybody's got to be funded from somewhere nobody are these people gonna work for free and this is the road that we're going down when the internet first, when I first got on the internet, I was a big advocate of social networking, and I use sort of now what I can, what what serves me. Uh, I use Twitter, as I told you, and why I use YouTube, and I don't have a MySpace account anymore. I'm not on Facebook. There's Facebook profiles with my name on them, but I have nothing to do with them. I don't. I don't even have passwords to any of that, and that's my personal stance on it. Uh, you can you can do whatever you want. I'm just sort of asking you to keep an open mind and maybe limit your personal information not not least of all because of you know your personal privacy but maybe your family or friends privacy as well and it's hard because I can see the, the road that we're going down it's just gonna get worse and worse it seems like that um, and I, I don't want to be the one guy holding the the brake banner step your brakes you know because <laughs> Because I do use social networking, and I'm I'm not I'm not entirely against it. Uh, it just I feel for the for the well-meaning people who don't realize what they're being a part of, or what's happening to them, or how they're being exploited, or the well-meaning person who takes a picture uh, accidentally and in the back frame catches a pot leaf, and then. Uh, you know, their next door neighbor is growing weed and then their next door neighbor, you know, gets shut down because he was using medicinal marijuana, you know, for his back ache. You know, I don't want, it's just, you hear stories like that and it sucks, I guess. There's some aspects of social networking that suck. And again, I said, if you can unplug your computer and all your friends disappear, I think that should be a red flag to anybody. So, nothing wrong with going out and actually really meeting people face to face or writing a letter to your grandma, or to your sister, or to your brother, or to your mom or dad. Nothing wrong with actually getting together in person with your friends instead of just on Facebook. So, keep that in mind, and that's really all I gotta say with social networking. I'm gonna record a song now. It'll be on uh, the Mr. Adam Josh YouTube channel. So, YouTube backslash Mr. M R. A-D-A-M-J-O-S-H. Tell your friends to get a job, and we'll go out with the M&M. &M.